A really extraordinary new report from the Gallup organization showing that there are now more businesses closing in America than new businesses opening up. So leads to a question that they asked, is American entrepreneurship dying? Let's bring in our panel. We have Phil Flynn, Price Futures Group senior market analyst, Fox Business contributor as well, Bob Rice, Tangent Capital Managing Partner, and Fox Business contributor, and Nomi Prince, Demos senior fellow. Good to have you all here. Phil, first to you, is the American dream dying? No, it hasn't. The problem is it's being held back, similar to like the Swiss franc, you know. And as soon as they lift it, the entrepreneurship in America is going to explode higher than the Swiss franc. I think it's been held back in this country by this administration. What's been going on with the Obamacare, you know, the rules about how many people they can hire. Let's face it, we've done everything we can to thwart small businesses in this country. As soon as we start lifting the reins, you're going to see entrepreneurship come back bigger than ever. Well, and Nomi, we as a business network are interested in the corporate tax. Corporate tax rate clearly is too high, but uh, too many people in Congress are focused just on that and not enough, I think, on the smaller businesses, these startups that this uh, report focuses on. Uh, the Club for Growth, a conservative group that you may not agree on much, but you may agree with them on this. They say while President Obama and Democratic leaders may prefer corporate only tax reform, we feel it's very hard to explain to Americans why their tax rates remain high while corporations see theirs lower. Do you agree? Well, I, I think that's that's a good point. But I also think small businesses relative to the larger corporations really do operate on, on a separate field, on a tax basis, and also on in terms of getting loans, in terms of getting credit, in terms of the ability to finance um, operations, particularly smaller than, say, $1 million um, type size and revenue small businesses. And so it's important to consider them um, in, in a basis to have more progressive taxes for, for them, um, to make it easier for them to, to continue to grow off their, their smaller revenue basis. But also, one of the problems that's hit small businesses has been the fact that they just the access to credit has not reached pre-recession uh, levels, particularly for those sizes. Yeah. So the enthusiasm and spirit there. Of course, the access there. for credit but, is, but is different problem. than the demand for credit. There are a lot of people, Bob, the small businesses that are not going out for credit because they can't afford it. By the way, the conclusion of this Gallup uh, research is this economy is never truly coming back unless we, re 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 we reverse the birth and death trends of American businesses. You agree? Yeah, I, I completely agree 100 percent. In fact, one of the things that it also points out is what we need to do, something positive to say, is we need to help entrepreneurs learn to be entrepreneurs. We have to learn to give them the resources, make capital available to them, as we were just talking about. One of the cool things that you actually to point is something positive that's happening. In New York City, there's digital.nyc, a new website that's an ecosystem, a portal, that really helps entrepreneurs learn about their community, meet other entrepreneurs, find working spaces, find workers, take classes. It's really a I think for thing. all those electronics, they, 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 a lot of businesses would trade those electronic gizmos just for less regulations. It's very simple. Mm. All right. Despite a mortgage rate that keeps falling and a huge refinancing boom, home builders got crushed today, as you can see. So why the disconnect, Bob? Look, there, there, there are so many uncertain fissures developing in this economy right now. This is a whole problem. If you think back to 2007, we saw a big crash in home prices, and nobody knew exactly what was going on. The economists kept saying things were going to be fine, and then they turned out not to be because of unforeseeable circumstances. When you see oil crash like this, there's waiting. people are waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah. But, Nomi, I want to find out specifically about home building. I mean, is it, is it a good bet now? Because on the one hand, people are refinancing and big numbers. On the other hand, you see the home builders getting crushed. What's going on? Well, I, I think to echo what was said earlier, there, there, there is still a significant amount of uncertainty. And what the oil situation has done is it's made banks less likely um, to, to lend and to be more conservative in their lending to first-time homebuyers and, and other types of, of homebuyers, despite the increase in applications for refinancing. We've had, we've had these rates for, for six going on seven years now, so nothing's changed there. But what's changing is all of these cracks in the economy are sort of connecting so that banks aren't necessarily going to to be extending credit to small time buyer um, home buyers and that's going to affect the home builders yeah. and that's why i don't think this is really the time to, okay. to be investing there. quickly phil what do you think you know, I, I talk to a lot of people, mortgage brokers, people who do these mortgages all the time. They get a feeling like there's a huge refinancing boom because rates are lower and they're afraid this is going to be their last hurrah. They're mm -hmm. taking advantage of this latest downtick and then they want to hurry up and get it before the rates start going up. Okay. And I think that's feeding it. Coming next, we have.